Hey everybody, Damien from Bay Ridge DIY here. This week in my video, I am building a stuffed animal house. Uh, one of my daughters really loves stuffed animals, so I figured I would make a house that hangs on the wall for her. It's a pretty simple build to do. You can do it in a couple days, if not a day, um, with waiting for the paint to dry. That was probably one of the longer parts. Uh, it's real easy to do. You can change the compartments however you wanted to. I put a bigger compartments on the bottom for some books. So she can put all of her books in there, easy to reach. She can put different stuffed animals in different ones. Should be hours of fun for her. Uh, stick around, we did get a special guest in the shop this week to help us build this. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Stick around, I'll show you how to build it. The first thing I do for this project is set up my saw to rip down all of my pieces. I cut the top and the bottom out of 5 8 Baltic birch. I cut them to 35 inches by 8 and 7 8 the roof will be two half inch pieces, 24 inches by 10 inches. I cut the sides out of half inch Baltic birch also to 36 by 9 inches. The last rip cuts will be the shelf boards. These get cut out of half inch Baltic birch to 35 inches by 8 and 7 eighths. Here I will mark out for my dados. I make a mark a quarter inch in on the first shelf and line the bottom piece up with it. The shelf will sit into the sides a quarter inch into a dado slot. I then mark out the spacing I want for my shelves. You could make this any space you wanted to fit your needs. There will be dado slots on both sides of all three of the shelves. I set the bottom piece aside and take the next shelf and line it up with the edge of the first shelf. Remember to put your dados in different spots from the top to the bottom of each shelf. If you put them in the same spots, it would weaken the shelf. I also put three dados on the side panels. They are a half inch thick and a quarter inch deep. I set my dado blade up to the thickness of the material that we'll be using, half inch Baltic birch. I use shims to get it perfect so it has a tight fit when sliding into the slots. After all my dados are cut, I put pocket holes in the top and bottom panels. With the help of some pipe clamps, I put the outside box together of the house. I only put pocket screws in the bottom side of the house for now. We'll put the top ones in later, after we get the shelves in. I use Titebond 3 wood glue in each of the dado slots. I then slide the shelves into place. I make sure that the correct dados are lined up with the bottom piece of the house. Making sure the top is flush with the edges, I finish putting the screws into the pocket holes. Using my square, I mark where each of the shelves sit on the side of the house. I then come with my nail gun and shoot a few nails in each one just for a little extra holding power. Back at the table saw, I cut down the dividers out of the scrap pieces of Baltic birch that came from the sides and the shelves. Even when you're taking precautions, accidents can happen at the table saw. Lucky for my ninja-like reflexes here, nobody got hurt. Using the tight bond 3 again, I put all my dividers in place. I wipe out any extra glue that squeezes out of the dados after it's done. While the glue dries up, I take a piece of 3 quarter inch alder lumber and rip it down into 3 eighths inch strips. This will be my face frame. You could use any type of lumber. I'm choosing to paint this so alder will paint up good. Using some wood glue and some brad nails, I attach the alder strips to the front of the shelves, the top, and the bottom. To 
put the rest of the facing on. I had a special helper in the shop, my six-year-old daughter. As you can see, she also found my snack cupboard. She tried to convince me to let her use the miter saw and the table saw, but I figured a pole saw would be a great place for a six-year-old to start. I took another scrap piece of alder lumber over to the planer and planed it down to the same thickness as the Baltic birch, about a half inch. Then at the table saw, I ripped them down to three-eighths of an inch to match the shelving facing. Hi, this is what we're making today. Stuff animal. My stuff animals for here's a house for them. That's what we're making for my stuff animals. If you can't tell, she was really excited to be in the shop and to see what we were making. She really wanted this house for her stuffed animals. She helped me finish nailing on the rest of the facing. It is great to see how quick kids can learn how to do stuff and how they take a liking to the same types of things that we like. Tickle Baby's DIY. Thank you. With my helper gone home for the day, it was time to start assembling the roof of the stuffed animal house. The first thing I needed to do was cut a slot about an inch in for the overhang. I'll take a piece of eighth inch plywood and put it in this slot as a backer. To mount the roof to the top of the house, I cut a couple triangular pieces out to fit in the peak and on the edges where it will meet the top of the house. I put these pieces on both the top and the bottom in the peak of the roof. I hold them in there with some 18 gauge brad nails and some glue. To hold the roof boards to the top of the house, I take two of the triangular pieces I cut out earlier at the table saw and cut them in half, making four pieces. I take two of the pieces and put pocket holes on the back sides of them. On a piece of eighth inch plywood, I trace the inside of the roof contour. I then add a quarter inch and cut it out on my jigsaw. I slide the eighth inch plywood into the slot that we made earlier in the two roof pieces. I then use my brad nailer to nail it to the triangular pieces that we fastened to the roof. To attach the roof to the house, I drill a couple small pilot holes in the front of the house. The back side of the roof will be fastened with some pocket screws. Finally, all that work pays off. We get to put the roof on the house. I attach the back with four pocket screws and I use the pilot holes that we drilled earlier to attach the front with a couple one inch washer head screws. I wanted to add a shingle effect to the roof of the house, so I took some eighth inch plywood and cut it down to 10 inch wide pieces. Next, at the table saw, I cut these down to an inch and a quarter inch strips. These will act as shingles for the roof. After all of my strips were cut, I start attaching them to the top of the house. I put a quarter inch overlap on each one of them, making sure not to shoot the nails past the overhang. A couple of the nails slipped out. I just cut them off with a wire cutters. On the front of the house, I take a 3 8 inch strip of alder and nail it from the peak down to the first piece of edging. This will act as a backer for the letter that I want to put on the house and makes it easier to put the front siding on. For the siding on the front of the house, I use a similar technique that we used for the roof. I cut down some 8 inch plywood into 1 inch strips. I then use the miter gauge on the table saw to get the correct angle to fit into the peak. 
Referencing off of the center strip, I cut each piece to fit. I then nail it in with my brad nailer. Once again, I use a quarter inch overlap, leaving three quarters of an inch exposed. I plan on mounting the house to the wall, so I use some 5 8 inch Baltic birch to act as support boards. Using the Craig Foreman, I drill pocket holes on each side of the boards. I use a 1 inch pocket screw to hold these in place. Did you ever lose your safety glasses? I lose mine all the time, they add in pencils. Then I realize that I have two pairs of safety glasses on my head. I plan on painting the house, so I fill in all of the nail holes in the edging with some wood filler. Once the wood filler is all dry, I use some 120 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander to sand the faces. The final building step is to take my router with a quarter inch bearing round over bit and round over all of the sharp edges on the facing. I apply two coats of gloss black oil based paint to the roof and the fascia of the house. I originally painted the siding on the front of the house white, but I was overruled later by my six-year-old. She wanted it pink. The compartment and the faces I roll on with a foam roller. I used a gloss white latex-based paint. To cap it off, I put an eighth inch piece of paneling on the back of the house. It's a decorative paneling. It looks really nice with the white and gives it some depth. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Uh, it's a really easy to build, a DIYer. It's a great weekend project you can work with your kids on. I had a great time having my daughter in the shop with me for an afternoon to help me nail some stuff together, do some gluing and some sawing. She had a good time doing it too. She was really excited to get it home and get it all filled up. Uh, we painted the top pink, put a big R on there for her. Um, she fit all of her stuffed animals in there. We put her books down here, make them a little more organized for her. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I know I did. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Bay Ridge DIY. And check us out down below. Click that button to subscribe on our channel. That keeps us going and we can keep making more cool videos for you guys. Thanks a lot. Till next time, have a good one.